Hello, and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I am available for on-site training, code reviews, and contracting. Now, this is our part three in our series of learning about modern C++, and specifically, we are doing that by using the tools available. I have Visual Studio set up with Clang Power Tools, CPP Check, and Clang Format extensions. I suggest that you go back and watch the previous two episodes for what the series is about and my reasoning behind using Visual Studio for these demonstrations. So in this episode, we're going to discuss some of the things that we can learn with our tools about inheritance and class hierarchies in C++ in C++ 11 and moving forward. So we have here our base class with a single pure virtual function and we have our single data member and then we have our function here called do thing with the same name then this class struct that inherits from base so let's go ahead and save this and we're going to run this through cling tidy and again remember we have all of the settings turned on for cling to automatically apply fixes where it can so the first thing that we notice is that Kling Tidy tells us the constructor does not initialize the data field. And this is fairly important because we actually had code here that could have been operating on uninitialized data. This primitive type of an int is not initialized by default. So this very simple check right here could theoretically catch many bugs in your code if you happen to have uninitialized data that you're operating on. The next thing that we notice is our do thing function here actually is not overloading, it is hiding the base class member do thing. And it is very possible that this is actually a bug in our code where we have unintentionally hidden base class functions by changing the signature of them. And then we also see our parameter i is unused and we get that it has commented out the name of i for us here so that it still has a name but it is now no longer a quote unreferenced formal parameter as you would have gotten in an error from visual studios compiler so let's go ahead and fix these things we actually did intend to override not hide the base class member so let's just go ahead and remove this name altogether and we like the fact that it is initializing using the uniform initialization syntax to the default value, which is going to be zero in this case for an integer. And let's go ahead and rerun our Clang Tidy. So we can see here now that Clang Tidy has changed our method from being virtual to being override. And this is great. This actually protects us from ourselves. And I believe that is the only change it made, and that is correct. It used virtual, it used override here instead of virtual. Now, if we were to go back to this previous version where we have some integer in here, let's just call it int for now because we don't have a reason to name it. Now we get from Visual Studio immediately an error telling us that we have marked something override that is not actually overriding a base class member. So we know that we've done something wrong. This is the point of the override specifier to let us know that we have done something incorrect when we intended to override, but we're not actually overriding a base class member. So this is the compiler and the tools protecting us from ourselves. Now we haven't run this through CPP check in a while. Let's go ahead and run CPP check. And it does not yet have anything else to tell us. So we have our struct base and derived here, and now let's go ahead and put in some code that initializes one of these. After all, what is the point of having virtual functions if we're not going to be operating on these things through a base class pointer? So we've created our base class object and we're calling our do thing member function on it, and we'll rerun this through Clang Tidy now. So Clang Tidy is able to tell us we have a potential memory leak here which is great it is true that we do in fact have a potential memory leak so we're going to also run this through the visual studio compiler and we get no warnings there so to address our issue here we're going to add a delete in and hopefully this should have satisfied clang tidy ah 
Now it is telling us that we are deleting an object called base that is abstract but has a non-virtual destructor, and that is true. So if we're going to do this correctly, then we need to add a virtual destructor to our base class. And we'll do it like this. And rerun our Clang Tidy again. So we have seen that Clang Tidy made a transformation for us here. We had code that looked like this, and it made this equals default instead. This is better because it uh, more clearly tells us and the compiler that we're doing a default destruction. We're not trying to actually specify our own. But then we also get this warning that basically says we're not following the rule of five or rule of zero. So this warning tells us we don't have our copy constructor, copy assignment, move assignment. So let's go ahead and do those. So we have created all of our special member functions and in the process created a new problem for ourselves that we no longer have a compiler created a default constructor. So we will go ahead and specify that also. So finally, we have it compiling again without any warnings. Now, this is the kind of thing that falls into the category of lots of little gotchas. We didn't know that we needed to create a virtual base class uh, destructor, but the compiler told us that. And once we did it, we didn't realize that we had actually implicitly disabled our move operations, but the compiler told us that as well, or Clang Tidy told us that as well. So we were able then to apply those, and in the process, we accidentally disabled our defaulted base class constructor, and so we uh, were just had to explicitly default it. And now this works. We have cleaned up all these problems. And this is, uh, this is good. This is what we want. So we don't have to necessarily be afraid of accidentally leaving something out when we are using the tools that can show us what exactly it is that we could have done better. Now, the problem since I am going to point out along the way where the tools have failed us, is that really in this example, there's no reason to do dynamic memory allocation at all. And indeed, if we were going to, we should not have had a new here. We should have been using a unique pointer. So let's go ahead and make this a unique pointer. And we will include our memory header to do that. And then here we will say, and we no longer need delete, and the Visual Studio IDE tells us right away here that delete is meaningless, we'll delete that, because Unique Pointer is doing automatic memory management for us. And let's see what Kling Tidy has to tell us now. So we have gone ahead and made our Unique Pointer here, and our tools are done giving us advice, but really at this point also, a human reading this code should have realized that we probably do not need to be doing any dynamic allocation at all and and should be doing something like this. But that is something uh, that the tools are not really able to analyze yet and tell us that we are doing a dynamic allocation for no reason that is good. Uh, so there you have it. This wraps up, for the most part, what our tools can currently tell us about inheritance and how to learn our, again, modern C++ practices. And remember, the tools are always being updated, and they will always be adding new checks that help us learn these things along the way. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.